hate me a pistachio. Pistachios also, I'm irresponsible. One time I bought a bag of uncra- of cracked pistachios, so it was just the pistachios. Disgusting, dude. And I'm surprised I didn't give myself diarrhea. <laughs> I was really surprised. Hello and welcome. My name is Jay Yee, and with me today is my good old friend, Alexander Gonzalez. Hello, I have no self-control. <laughs> and please remember that we are not game devs. How are you doing today, Alex? Uh, I'm doing all right, Jay. Doing all right. Trekking along, um, trying to keep playing in my sandbox of uh, backlog games. And there's a train coming. (laughs) It's coming to the station with a bunch of games. Oh, there's so many games coming out. And I'm deep in that Splatoon game. And I've been meaning to... uh, uh, Shoot, I I was going to go somewhere with that. But now I I have no idea where I was going to go with that. So I guess I won't talk about that. But those are not the forgetful things we're talking about today. Today, we're creating something new. Every week on We Are Not Game Does, we imagine a brand new video game idea from our minds. Join in on the fun, be creative. And if you have your own unique video game idea or want to patch into ours, write in to appoundgames at gmail.com. Today is my turn to present We Are Not Game Devs 223rd IP. Let's begin with this basic concept. I'm still trying to remember where I was going to go with that sentence, but I just can't. I, it had something to do with the Switch, something that's backlogged, something I'm playing. Nothing. Nothing's coming to me. So my idea here is we've done an idea similar to this before, but I think I have enough to take it in a completely different direction. And also, you probably don't remember the last one. So we're just going to go with it. But imagine a world very similarly to the world Full Metal Alchemist built up. Not Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but like the first anime that's not based on the manga. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, where sometimes like, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist, the regular one, you'd be like, that character will get better, right? No, their life was just shit. And that's yeah. the end of that. Yeah. They don't even come back. (laughs) Uh, But pretty much imagine that world where if you remember, there was like a war happening between like the The alchemists and like people who don't believe in alchemists, but they had their own form of alchemists. Yes, sure. Yes. But it's going to be kind of like that, but also mixed with like fire emblem, three houses where it's going to be the alchemists versus the people who are like magic alchemy. But uh, no, you can't do that. Or like Templars versus mages. Exactly. Like, that so that's goes what's against be. the gods. Uh, so, however, in this world, it's kind of more like, kind of like contemporary times, I guess, but more like, I want to say like 17 to 1800s in our time, if we're to put a date on it in terms of where the technology is, because you're going to be on the alchemy side and their main weapons are going to be guns, but the bullets are alchemy bullets. So they make different concoctions to like change the bullet style, right? So it's going to be a action adventure game with crafting and gathering mechanics pretty deep in the lore. So do you want to be someone like the dragonborn where you're chosen or do you want to be a regular person i think this is gonna there's two ways we could do it the first way is this is some low class knight in or i guess mage in the uh let's call it the monarch's army right and then he kind of gets a special gun or a special like companion or finds like a old alchemist book that gives him like special abilities or it's some random dude that's not part of the monarch's army and he uh or she is special in some way and just happens to help in either side maybe it's an alchemist that's helping out the other side uh against the alchemist because they believe although they believe alchemy is not wrong but the way that the current alchemists are doing it is wrong and so they want to help the other side but also try to make the other side understand hey alchemy is not like the devil by the way it's just science or whatever all right so 
I think what we're going to be doing then is if you want the alchemist to be on the side that's killing other alchemists, we should probably have the other alchemists be doing things that is sort of wrong generally speaking and ethically to most people well i For think instance, they would be doing basic wrong alchemy doings like necromancy type stuff and like right trying to or like, sacrifices or blood bloodstones and yeah or like elongating modifying their one's bodies life or yeah making gold by sacrificing maybe by taking the life of others exactly like they're going to be doing shady sh i think the alchemy side is obviously going to be going to be doing shady shit like that so the monarchy has kept themselves alive and in power for so long by sacrificing its subjects we'll say that yeah and you're Young an alchemist from the land yes and you're an alchemist that specializes in being an anti-alchemist so for some reason, your powers, uh, because you self-taught yourself alchemy, it's almost like reverse alchemy. So it undo it undoes spells and makes it so your alchemy breaks other alchemy. Before we go too far on that thought, I think I kind of like the idea more of you once being part of the the monarchs subjects like military but then because of a event that happens very early on in the game you were like well fuck this shit and then you run off with maybe like a prototype that is like an anti like a dispel type of thing where you could like cancel out certain bullets and stuff like that if and that could be a mechanic in the game where you'll have dispel and if like something crazy happens you could shoot that bullet and then it'll like get rid of that move and maybe that bullet is or that spell the alchemy components are like very basic components maybe um or we can make it really dark and it, ha it they have to be like the ashes of your enemies or something like that and so you only get to use your dispel move every time you're like kill an opposing alchemist and then maybe there's a non-lethal playthrough where you maybe don't even want to use that at all type of thing yeah i can see that and then you can do um i think your alchemy can just be i think there's a couple of different alchemies you can do you can do an aggressive alchemy but i think it would be really cool so for instance this is the this is the kind of alchemy I was thinking. Someone shoots a fire at you, right? They do an alchemy that shoots a fire. Your alchemy, you grab onto the fire and it starts crystallizing. And as it crystallizes, it starts out slow, then goes faster until it reaches the other alchemist and crystallizes them. I like it. But quick reminder, remember in this universe, alchemy is done through guns and their bullets, and they make the spells in their bullets. So you'd have to do it where maybe when you touch their guns explodes or maybe this guy has, he's a back, he's a backwoods person who has like a boomerang that when he hits your gun with the boomerang and I'm using a boomerang to appropriate Batman's batarang. Cause I was like, how else do you knock a gun out of somebody's hands except with a boomerang like object? Well, I think how it's going to play mo mostly. So this is how I see it in my head is kind of like a mix between The Last of Us and I guess Dishonored, where like we give you this open map and your mission goals, and they could change throughout the map. And while you're exploring the map, you could like search for resources and preset spells in your like bullet, uh, I don't know, belt, right? You have like a belt with like all these bullets slots and you could like put them in there and then in the game maybe you could like organize the order they'll come up type of thing um and as you're organizing your bullets and you're like walking around gathering for resources to get more spells or looking for blueprints to get new recipes for spells and stuff like that uh you could choose to either go in loud guns blazing using your biggest spells and just blowing shit up everywhere or you could go and like use more like stealthy spells like 
silent spells right. or like things to make I people think, fall asleep or like go turn blind or something. That's yeah, I think stuff like that where now I'm um, now you got me thinking like a spell where you have maybe a bullet around or two bullets um depending cuz it costs a lot to make it where you can teleport to the bullet's location. Mm -hmm. Or another one where um if you shoot somebody with a bullet it creates like a like a darkness around them like in a sphere so it would be dark there so you can stealth or they wouldn't see you um and like, this they don't can have work to, for sure they don't have to work like bullets either like maybe you have a spell where you shoot up in the air and it like casts like a shimmering thing around you and it like you turns you invisible it like camouflages you in that Spot or if you don't move you shoot yourself in the head and you become stealth sure we could make it or cool there's like another that. spell that you shoot yourself in the arm and then it gives you super strength if yeah. you want to go out like that it becomes like uh it becomes like a fucking poosh, like uh instead of like a, a gun, shot it's like a shot not a shot yeah so i was like thinking that. you could also do that um with your legs too because as Plain as it sounds, there's nothing better for a stealth campaign when you have a sick double jump or a high jump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you have one of those and you can get on roofs and then get the high ground to kind of check the level out, super satisfying. I think instead of it being like a jumping thing, I think it would be like a spell of like, or an alchemy spell of like, I, I guess we'd have to think about it like alchemy, Or a right? grappling so hook oh yeah that that works but instead of a grappling hook maybe it's something that's all purpose where it can it'll grab onto a roof but you can also grab onto people and use it in stealth like if you just grab onto them and bring them to you yeah let's think about this in terms of alchemy because what's the what's the number one rule in alchemy alex um what is it again that you that it has to be equal and yeah equal place uh I, I forget what the full metal equivalent is exchange, equivalent right? Exchange, yeah, yeah. So whatever you use, you need to give back. So for the grapple hook, let's say you get like tree roots, and you gather tree roots everywhere, and it's like Groot essentially. It's like this giant tree branch, and then it grabs onto it, and then you can grapple up. And for enemies, you grab their face, and it muffles them, and you draw them back towards you. You know what I mean? It could be and then cool you could do, like and it could be something like. And it'll come alive and look different, but you can collect like coconuts and tree roots. So then like all of a sudden it would engulf them and then their face would be in a coconut and it would drag them back. Yeah, we can make it coconutty. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm whatever. Fine with it. A net. Yeah, let's make this place take place in it's a fictional land, but you know, all these high fantasy places always take place in like an England like type of Scottish like motherfucking place. Let's make this like feel like it's like Vic or industrial era london but if industrial level london was like in the bahamas you know what i mean <laughs> like it's like yeah, very you like know because then it'd be really cool because you could also like gather the feathers of eagles and they don't exist out there and hawks or you know what? How about this? You gather the feathers of parrots, and as you put them together, like if you jump off, you can hold on to your gun, fire the bullet, and it becomes wings that can like let you soar down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you cool with that setting? A tropical steampunk town, essentially. Yeah, like Nassau, right? But like a reimagining, because that's Nassau. I don't know shit actually. So I know Nassau's for pirates. Mm -hmm. but I'm thinking like you would do something where it's like a port where everyone gathers, and because it's along a trade route, there's also alchemists there that are trading coming in, and there's a lot of materials for them to make things. Yeah, I think, I think it's actually going to be more like, uh, I just named this game the Arcane game. What did Valorant? the king make? Huh? Oh, you're talking about Dishonor too. Dishonor. Oh, so I think part. like Dishonor, but not so nasty. And also in tropical area, not like London looking place. Everyone like was so backstabby in Dishonor too. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Where it's kind of like, it's whale punk in that, but it's kind of more steampunk, but magic based, that like magic punk, yeah. I guess, but tropical. Like, just think like, you come out of this super cool Hogwarts looking thing. And instead of you coming out to like, a 
mountainous area. You come out to a beach with a beautiful yeah, sunset. And there, <laughs> and there can be stuff like um like uh unlocks and special powers in underwater caves. Yeah. Where there's like platforming elements. Volcano caverns. Yeah, and that could be another thing where volcano caverns you unlock fire abilities. Mm -hmm. So the water um, where you have to pick up volcanic abilities. rack rock or something. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to travel all across. Let's make them an archipelago of let's say like six islands that are all connected by magic. That's great because we could also add another level in. You know, we cover all our bases here where there's a mountain that's really high up and there's snow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's an active volcano. And it's an active volcano. So then there's fire and stuff. That the monarch's top mages always protect and make sure that the volcano doesn't erupt. And the last level is as you're climbing up, you find out that when they get there, it's the one place where land touches the sky and they're actually living in the clouds. What? There's a whole nother part of the game. It opens yeah, up. Yeah, that's where the monarchy, when you finally get and you think you're about to destroy the monarchy, you find out that that was just the face of the monarchy and then that there's a secret organization in the clouds that have been living. I like it. And then it's like, and during the entire game, there's a person on the other side. Uh, so, okay. So you're an alchemist that was on the king or the monarch side, but then you switch over to the other side because you meet some friends over there that like save you maybe from a cer certain situation that the alchemy side like got you. Like you just, you didn't believe in the alchemy ways. They like, punish you or whatever and like essentially try to kick you out but then you're saved by the 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 knights of the other side right and then they take you in teach them you teach them some of your ways and secrets they teach you your, theirs and like you guys become friends but then there's an, another person on the alchemy side that you meet later on that tries to help you uh throughout the game and then when you get up to the very very end and up to the sky place you use the, those two friends that you made and make them convinced to get over the differences and you guys all go against the cloud kingdom because it's the common enemy. i think the cloud kingdom is going to be cool because it's going to be different alchemy where they're going to be using lightning alchemy and using cloud alchemy where uh they have magic are we haven't even seen they use light alchemy. yeah and lights and like and like god ray alchemy yeah. where all of a sudden they're going to be shining lights and sound alchemy maybe part of the way the monarch stayed in power maybe it's just like uh fire emblem three houses where the monarch and the alchemists also believe in one true religion and they control the religion because they control it from the skies and they like smite people from the heavens but it's just it's actually just alchemy yeah, and you just find it's an alchemy that they haven't taught anybody else and have kept secret. It's and perfect. they've they've been at war with the continent to the east that they have discovered 300 years ago and have been at war with them ever since because they believe that these islands have dark magic and they're afraid that they'll come over to their land. And they've already taken over the smallest archipelago island on this island of six called new hope <laughs> and new hope is the farming community well that's that's like where the fortress of these knights and dudes are now i guess and then instead of it them being the fortress dudes let's make them like look like pirates they're they're like a Vi Viking kingdom, and their war has been or their land has been ravaged by war and civil unrest. But then they've recently reunited, and under their new ruler's rule, they decide to expand and look what's beyond their borders. And they found these islands first, and ran into these crazy uh, heathens that can do magic. That do magic to enhance their bodies, and that they also do sacrifices and ascend yeah, kind of bioshocky yeah an island of magic that was disrupted when the pirates came i'm trying to think if it would make sense for their weapons to eat alchemy yeah they would need something to like be against the magic right 
So and I think it would just be like the main champions would be like the highest ranking soldiers would have like a claymore that when it slices through alchemy, it starts burning red. And then it starts with like orange then red and then blue. And then at that point, it's very uh, dangerous. Or, I mean. <laughs> uh I was going to go crazy with it, but I don't think we should go that direction. Let's let's see if maybe like. The the enemies that they're fighting. These pirate like Vi Viking like pirate dudes. Um, what if they kind of fight like i guess kind of like guerrilla warfare so kind of like stealthy like you have to like seek them out they're always hiding and you don't really know where they always are like they're like assassin like people yeah you could do that too i mean to get up close and they sneak around yeah and stuff of that nature and so most of the time in the game when you're fighting you have to deal with the other alchemists because that's who you're fighting. Uh, but then, like, sometimes you'll find rogue people, of the people you're trying to be with, or they mistake you as an alchemist and you have to fight them. And it's more like those scenes in Last of Us Part Two where you're getting hunted by the Whistler peoples and you feel like you're being that's hunted the thinking. whole time. Yeah. And I think that would also make sense because that's where also you learn how to be more stealthy as a character. They teach you how to stealth. And then you could learn, right? Like, you could get then gain your own recipes for like stealth alchemy that the other people I, don't use. Right. I didn't like that section. People are like, oh, because you felt like you were being hunted. Yeah. And also, I've never killed more dogs. In right. The game. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. But they're they're not using dogs. They uh, no, they're not. We're not going to have them use dogs. They're maybe just they use weasels. Maybe no. they <laughs> whistle to each other to like communicate with each other, and then they like jump you whenever they can. And so you have to, as alchemists, learn like slow down or like wind spells. And to, they're like, also going to use them. a bird. I think they'll probably use a bird overhead eventually. Yeah, I I could I could see that. So those guys would be annoying to fight. And then you have the alchemists that are going to be cool to fight because it's like magic on magic type fighting. And then you have the dispel move and stuff. And then I guess you'll just have to fight. There's these animals that have been rampaging across the land. And you found out it's because the alchemists have been doing crazy experiments and creating homunculi without no one knowing. And so these ravaged beasts that look like monsters morphed into each other isn't a to evolutional you, mishap you have to it's, dispel them yeah it's a bad uh it's it's bad alchemy and then you gotta dispel them and then they'll uh you can maybe get an item or something from them that you can use yeah and then as uh the game moves on and you fight higher and higher level people in the alchemist army uh, instead of fighting other alchemists, you eventually fight like human homunculi that are like mixed with animals and they're like alchemists that could also have like a jaguar legs and shit like that. That's where I wanted to go with it, too. That way it justified the atrocities. That there's like high ranking Frankenstein monsters. <laughs> yeah. And then they become more and more animalistic as it goes on until you have like. You have like an anaconda human, but there it's like a human face, but an anaconda body. Like they start slowly losing their, they they look less and less human. Yeah. One of the last bosses you have to fight is the general at the beginning of the game that makes fun of you for be feeling bad about being an alchemist and punishes you. And at the very end of the game, you find out that he's like been turned into a gorilla or something. I love gorilla fighters. Yeah, that's great. Cool. I mean, how much more can we add to this game? I feel like we, you kind of understand where I'm trying to get with it. I kind of understand where we're trying to get with it. We could talk about like yeah. different types of spells, but I'm really bad at thinking of like alchemy stuff. Like, uh, what do you need? You need like what two pieces of copper 
uh some water and a little bit of salt and you make sparks it's, it, it, well no there would be a day night cycle and then on days and nights there's going to be different materials that you can farm you can farm things from vegetation to um inanimate objects to uh you know like rocks and minerals to animals and then there's going to be maybe some supernatural stuff where there's going to be like fairy gardens there's going to be like claws off of certain demons or and then you'll also be getting materials from a monkey lie that you'll be using right do you think it's going to be open world or drop into like big maps where you have main mission type of things and then you revisit those maps and the main mission changes around i think it's it's going to be open world main maps like you said so you're going to drop into a level and it's going to be part of the archipelago and you're not going to maybe late game you'll gain a flying ability to glide to each place but until then yeah no to like scavenge for different things you missed right maybe um yeah okay i could see it maybe being like arcs so from chapter one through seven you're here from seven to ten you're here and from ten to twelve you're in the sky place you know what i mean like we make it into those chapters and then you could all instead of yeah. just making it so you go later you could go back whenever because i'm assuming you want to go back to finish side quests right to like farm for I certain think, spell ingredients and, and stuff like that you could even make this game really long I mean, because with the I even opening of the sky world, it could be very long. And then, no, after the, so you go to the sky world, and then you're about to face the boss, and you have your three guys, and you think you're all pumped up, and you're going in for the fight, and they kick your ass, and they send you down into the water, and as you're falling into the water, you keep falling until you come out the other side, and now oh, you're in no. the shadow world. Oh no! And this is the alchemy that you actually know how to use, and it's because you're from the shadow world, which is actually inverse, is what it's called. Uh -huh, and in uh -huh. there, they all have those alchemy abilities, uh -huh, uh -huh. and that's why you vibe so much with the stealth side of the new kingdom that came in. Because, because yep, you felt because that's all actually, along that you were in the darkness. So now you're in inverse and then you start learning from them and learned about how they, sh how they fractured the world and it used to be one. And now you get sent back with magic powers back to the sky kingdom, all built up and ready to go with beefed up new powers yeah. where now you can, um, you have new materials that mix to make your alchemy even stronger. And, and you thought maybe they even give you a new gun. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And, so now and, you have dual pistols. You have one from the real game, for, I mean, from the regular world, and then one from the inverse. Yeah. So now you can do inverse and regular alchemy, and also like maybe merge spells together and shit like that. Yeah. But, so then you can mix and match now. Um. Shoot, what was it? So you get to the inverse world, right? And you have this whole new other world to explore. Uh, you gain new spells. And there, there's like the skill tree where you unlock all like the different spells you could eventually unlock or like different skills you could use with those spells. There's been one that's grayed out for like 60 hours of the game and eventually the player is like, oh, it's probably for DLC or something. Once you go to the inverse world, you open up that uh, skill unlock menu, like the quest giver is like, well, here's a new gun. And then you open up your menu and it's like, Whoosh, and then a whole new skill tree unlocks. And you're like, oh, and no. I think and I think that's where you can start doing stuff like summoning spirits that can help you or have different abilities. That's going to dangerous ground because now you're starting to do some dark alchemy there. I think, yeah, I guess so. It would have been dope if like you used your new gun and you sat there and like you uh, you put in a bullet and you shoot it out to the ocean and then you just see like darkness coming from the ocean until like a spirit comes out. What if it's like, you know how in uh, a Full Metal like, Alchemist... So it would look like Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. So all of a sudden the sky goes black, and then you see the ocean go black, and then he just comes out of the ocean. You know how in Full Metal Alchemist, not Brotherhood, but Full Metal Alchemist, it's not based on the manga, uh, whenever he goes 
through the door, there's that weird dude with the smile on his face. And he's like, I'm going to eat yeah. your arm. Eventually, you're going to give me your whole body. Maybe it's kind of like that. <laughs> he where, has a New York accent for some reason. <laughs> where like uh, when you learn the inverse magic, what it actually is, is like it's kind of like in the flash when the speed force is trying to correct itself for all the flashes, like time manipulation shit, where it's like you summon you could summon not a spirit or a demon, but you're summoning the the spirit of alchemy trying to correct for the monarchs not using equivalent exchange. Because you found out that they haven't used equivalent exchange. Instead, exactly. they banished a whole other island. So now they're trying to take back. They sank an island to create a philosopher's stone. And that's what they've yeah. been using. And this this creature that you meet in the inverse land teaches or tells you anything with that and that's thing why, i could eat and get rid of essentially like i yeah, am gonna write the world and that's why they're in the sky because they tried to get as far away from the inverse land as possible damn yeah so this is like what 110 120 hour game all of a sudden this is <laughs> very is, japanese as you're like so 75 hours in i unlocked a whole gun in a new system exactly a whole new mechanic god damn it I mean, uh, let's just go with music, I guess. just That's just where we're at in the script. Where, where are we going with music? Just a whole epic kind of magic-inspired, like Harry Potter-inspired soundtrack. Like, just an epic, like, score. Oh, an orchestral, just beautiful, yeah. yeah. Uh, That'd be great. That kind of sounds... But it'd have to be, like, it, you, we say that, but then at the same time, it's got to have, like, tropical I was going to say, I forgot. It. This is a, in a tropical <laughs> land, so it's going to, instead of so, it being, like... So do you think there's going to be, like, steel drums and shit? Like, are we going to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's going to be, like, a fantasy-like theme, but in, and instead of having violins and stuff like that, it's actually, yeah, like, steel drums and, like, harps and shit like that. Uh, guitars and, like, um flutes and stuff and the flutes will give it kind of like a like a magical tune to it you know uh, <laughs> yeah yeah like a very weird tropical fantasy mix i think that could sound dope that's gonna be great because it's gonna be really cool it's gonna be a really colorful great looking game and then when you go into the inverse world at least for me as a player it's gonna be like black and white and grayscale. i was it's gonna, gonna be say one instead time, of it being black like what we would imagine it to be what if it was like gray with paper white skies like the skies are paper white yeah i could see that and then that's gonna be a nice break from the otherwise colorful world exactly lots of oranges and reds in this game lots of yellow pricing i mean 70 bucks full pop yep, yep. alex time to start your timer because it's time to name this game all right and it begins the magic bullet have you had a game already called the magic bullet no i don't think so all right, so zero seconds, Magic Bullet. Magic Bullet is a game where you play as an alchemist who was once in the monarch's army until you found out the cost of what it took to keep in power and use magic. Since then, you have been working for the rebel group in trying to dethrone the monarchy and use your new form of alchemy unique to you, Dispel, to write wrongs you team up with two other characters in your adventures to learn more alchemy dispel the alchemy in place and fight for what is right and magic bullet all right so i think we have a game here alex what do you think would this be a game you want to play and is it fun yeah this is be my type of game i haven't done a 100 hour rpg in a while i mean i guess You're i started one right now. now yeah yeah, um, that's different in the sense that I'm 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 beating people up, but I'm not using magic. So it'd be fun to get into magic like that and uh, play a game where there's still systems on systems. It kind of reminds me of like it's it's weird not game dev Xenoblade Chronicles, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely would play this. I thought when I first was coming up with this, it would be more like a Western RPG, more action based. But yeah, as we went on and you kept adding more story, I'm like, this is turning into a JRPG real quick. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, just doing more and more. Yeah. And giving but I like, what they I like where the story is at. I think this is a really cool story with a lot of ups and downs and a lot of twists and turns, like a JRPG should, where you think it's about to end and everything's ramping up. But then there's another level that's full and, open it, world. <laughs> and then another that's one. Where it, in the developer interview, they're going to be like, what are your inspirations? I like manga a lot, particularly One Piece. <laughs> Because that's what happens to him all the time. Yeah, yeah. Or that I think that's like a Naruto thing where it's like it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. When you when just when you think it's over, it something else happens. Like I have another form or whatever. And it's like, did you know that the moon is actually a beast? Yeah. Oh, and then yeah, at the end of the game, you go to space, or like you find out that there's a space invader, like there's something coming from the moon. And they're like, or that's not it at all. You found out that the moon was actually been watching you the whole time, and that is actually the god that they were praying to, but they had forgotten, and they thought that they had become gods themselves and had become drunk with power. Yeah, and then the pirate nation that's DLC. The, the pirate nation on the other side is like, "What? You didn't know that? That's our god." <laughs> We've been praying <laughs> oh, to that one Jesus. the entire time. I feel like that's when I become butters. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Now that we have a complete game, what game studio would be you assigned to be able to make Magic Bullet the best? See, this is the thing. It's super easy. Atlas, Square Enix. Square um, Enix is the first people that came to my mind just because they do a lot more like weird stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I could also see it going to the people who did Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, Polly something. What if? Yeah, what if we gave it to Blue Point Games? Yeah, uh, original from them. Monolith is the people behind Xenoblade. Um, who else? Who else? Well, I mean, Arcane Studios. I suppose. I suppose. What's an? It would. Be, what's a Western RPG maker that makes fucking long ass games? I guess Bethesda, but that wouldn't be right. No, and then it would be the alchemy would be on point, and the combinations would be on point. Yeah. However, you might make power so broken it crashes the game. Maybe it'd be more of like a obsidian thing, like not necessarily Bethesda, but obsidian that is willing to do a little bit more crazier stuff. And I mean, if you wanted to, it's archipelago, so it's maps with missions to do, things to collect, and magic to to learn. Right? That's Ubisoft. Yeah, I was like Ubisoft. Like, is this like a fork? Far <laughs> and then game? they're like, "Wait, you want to make a big, long, nice looking game with a lot of lore? Got you, fam." Ubisoft. All these characters <laughs> are based on fictional characters. If anything has any relation to you, well. It's not. That'd be surprising. <laughs> like, yeah, it does not at all. And with that, our 223rd IP has gone gold. We look, we hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to give us extra support, please head over to patreon.com slash devs for just a dollar. Patrons receive episodes early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which you cut the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash devs. Like, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And if they ask for a review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review Magic Bullet, the video game we just created. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is Jay Yee. And I'm AG. Thank you. And please remember that we are not game devs. Uh, I didn't do it now the during, old during this thing, but I thought uh, I was going to say 223. For some reason... Having being in the 220s, I feel like I have to go two two, whatever number two two. Yeah, take it easy two two two. Um, I'm surprised we didn't add the 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 last thing we need is um, a man screaming a name painfully, and a woman screaming a name of her lover as she dies painfully. You know, Sasuke. Naruto! That'll happen somewhere in the middle of the game where the last straw is when you see your best friend killed on the monarch's executioner stage. 
There you go. There you go. It's just. It's going to have it all. I wonder if uh, the moon people will be maybe mechanical. Who knows? They're bunnies. <laughs> like the rabbit from Naruto at the end. You're like, you're a fucking rabbit. Here, let's 